listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for he is As a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, all of your gifts are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com. God bless you. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio. On Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Spreaker.com, all of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. This is Declaring the Finished Work, and I am your host, Pat Rando. We will be continuing today with part six of a 2021 podcast series entitled B. Before we get started, I would like to just express some of the thoughts and feelings that I have been experiencing since this Ukraine war broke out. I tend not to too often get into political conversations or current event conversations, but there are times that current events and what's happening in politics connects to things that have been shown to us in the scriptures. And I don't think that we should ignore them because these are stories. These are stories that generations after us will be able to reflect on and be able to gain wisdom and see God's truth in that moment and be able to look at it from the eyes of God. I believe because, well, first of all, there's nothing new that's happening right now with this war. We've been told that we would enter a season where 
there are wars and rumors of wars and and people are more apt to believe lies than rather than believe the truth that even the elect would be easily deceived and which is why we have to stay aware and stay alert and stay connected to the spirit of God stay connected to our birthright as children of God a birthright that was secured for us through the life death and burial and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus amen he came to save the world and not to condemn it and I think these prophetic words that were expressed in the Bible, in the scriptures, about the things that we would see and to also encourage and, and, and strengthen us to be able to face these coming days. So we're in the midst of, uh, of those days of wars and rumor of wars and people more willing to uh, swallow a lie than to hear the truth and to believe the, the, the truth. And I feel in my spirit that what God is showing us, this is not something that he is doing, but this is the spirit of our enemy, Satan, at work. Because he knows that he is coming, he's, he's coming closer and closer, or, or it's getting closer and closer to the end of his reign in the earth. He is the prince of this world. And he has been influencing and impacting Human beings, which is why this world is broken. Because we have been identifying with our broken self rather than who we really are. Remember, all of creation is groaning and travailing, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, for the children of God. So this is the spirit of Satan's last efforts in trying to frighten us to try and shake our faith and our hope in the true and living God to try and break our connection to the spirit of God and to blind us from seeing who we are, and the, the power that is on the, that dwells on the inside of us is because the Spirit of God lives on the inside of us. The kingdom of God is within us. And the more that we move into that, the more that becomes a threat to Satan being able to hold on to this world. But we know that this has to come to an end. And I want you to remember as you see these things and you hear these things, know that it is the work of our enemy, the devil, Satan, that spirit that wars and divides, that tries to control and dominate, that wants to bring a spirit of fear over us and discourage us and cause us to lose hope. That's his end game. Stay alert. Keep your mind sharp. And identify quickly the tactics of the enemy. 
our Lord and Savior came into this earth in the form of man. But he was, he came, he was given by the Father to bring life and life more abundantly. And he exposed the works of the devil. He made them, he pulled the works of the devil out of the shadows and into the light for us to see. Don't get caught up in the illusion or the delusion. Trust God. Keep your hope anchored in him. You are more than conquerors. Christ in you, your hope of glory. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And now for part six of the podcast series, B. God bless and be blessed. And and I pray that you will hear something that will connect with you on the inside and strengthen you. Amen. Good afternoon, God's wonderful creations. This is Pat Randall. I am the host for Declaring the Finished Work. I'm welcoming you to another hour of uh, time to just reflect on how good God is, to reflect on who we are as his creation, how when he created us, he said that it was good. And then it got so good that he said it was very good. So praise God. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Again, as I said, this is Declaring the Finished Work, and I'm your host, Pat Randall, on this wonderful Thursday afternoon. Let's get started. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this day. I glorify and exalt your holy name. I thank you for breath. It is your breath that I am breathing right now, that we are breathing right now, because you are the life giver. I thank you for this time that we have together, that your word will come forth and bring life, that it will bring restoration and it will bring healing, that it will strengthen and encourage us. And I praise you. I give you all the glory for this. Holy Spirit, have your way during this broadcast. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Okay, so let's take a look, just a short peek back at last week's message. And in that, in that, in last week's message, I came out of the scripture, Matthew 7, verses 1 through 5. And basically, in this this particular chapter, it talks about uh, judge not and you won't be judged because that same judgment that you measure out to people, it's going to be measured back to you. It tells us to love our neighbors. This is Jesus talking to us, to love our neighbors, right? Love our neighbors as we love ourselves and to forgive so that we can be forgiven, right? And to give and it, it shall be given to us. We don't give for the, pers- for the purpose of someone giving back to us, but it is just the law, the natural flow that when you give that it, it, it comes back to you is that sowing and reaping um spiritual law that that takes place but the motivation of our hearts is just to give amen and also it talks about loving your enemies and as i said last week this can be uh difficult truths these are these are truths that jesus is giving us right and this message about not judging because 
if we don't want to be judged by others, then we shouldn't judge them. And when we forgive, then we shall be forgiven. And when we give, it's given back to us. And sometimes even more, because the scripture says, pressed down and shaken together, uh, men will give to you. And about loving your enemies, these are truths that Jesus is given, giving, giving to us. And that's who he, he is truth. He is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. So what he is given, he's giving us out of who he is. He is truth. So he's giving us this truth. And our flesh will most oftentimes react to especially the most the more difficult truths are which are uh loving your enemy and not judging people those are some things forgiving people those are some things that can become uh very difficult and war um through our flesh because our flesh doesn't want to our, our flesh if our flesh decides, and when I say flesh, I'm not talking about your physical body. I'm just talking about that carnal reasoning that we have uh, been trained up in from living in this world. That that eye for an eye and, and uh, people not deserving to be forgiven. And um, they did this to me, so why should I forgive them? Or, or I should give back to them, you know, if they did me wrong, that I'm going to do them wrong. That whole, that's, 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 that's the flesh. And it always wars against the spirit. The spirit of truth. It comes against it. But the good news is, is that we are a new creation. Praise God. Praise God. Because of what Jesus did and what he accomplished by coming into the earth. He has moved us. He has become the second Adam, according to the scripture. He is that second Adam. And now we are. The offshoot of this second Adam. That Jesus has broken through. He has set the captives free. And now we just have to learn how to walk in this freedom that he has given us. And the, the way to, to walk in this freedom is to embrace the truth. To be able to... To live according to what he is giving us through his words, his words of truth, to be able to, to live in that place. And, 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 and with it, it comes freedom. Sometimes, you know, we think that it feels better not to forgive somebody who doesn't deserve to be forgiven. But actually, it feels much better to forgive people, even the ones that don't deserve it. There is a freedom, a liberty that comes with that, a liberty that comes with loving your enemy that's beyond anything that we could have even understood because it doesn't even seem, I mean, to the carnal mind, it doesn't even make sense, me loving my enemies. How can that bring me peace? How can how can that bring me joy? How can that bring me liberty? How is that possible? How can that bring healing into my life? But that is the truth. As I said before in John 15, we are instructed and encouraged to abide in in the vine to abide in Jesus and if we stay connected that we will have everything that we need when you see a branch connected to a tree it's not trying to be the tree trunk it's not trying to be the roots it's just being the branch and it's connected to the tree, receiving its nourishment, 
through that tree. Amen. So I am going to move on. And I, I hope you just go back, listen to last week's last week's message. And just begin to read the scriptures for yourself. And just allow the Holy Spirit to just to, to start to reveal to you what you need to hear in this moment, in this season. Now, I haven't done too many things on the air in regard to what is going on in today's culture. Because we have a lot going on. Some of it is just... It's unbelievable. I'm I'm just amazed. I'm amazed. I'm I'm amazed by these conspiracy theories that people swallow so easily. It doesn't even have to make sense, and people will take it. They it's easier for them to believe lies for than for them to believe the truth. They don't they don't want the truth. They, pref- they seem to prefer the lies. And what has been even more disturbing to me, and I'm working through this process, is, uh, is, is, is the Christian church. The Christian church and how it has been responding during these times and the things that I see from my brothers and sisters in Christ and what it clearly demonstrates to me that you can be saved, filled with the Spirit and prophesying, all of this, and still not really be abiding in Him. Not really being connected in Him. Not truly being the new creation, not truly being who you are, stripped down from all the things that you've picked up from the world, from church organizations, all the stuff that you pick up through various teachings, all of that stuff, just being able to strip down and get to this true you who is in the image of of God. And I see believers, even people that I personally know, and then, of course, those that I don't know, but the numbers are just, it's mind-boggling that there, that there are so many people who are falling prey to some prophecy that's nonsensical, not not nonsensical in the sense of uh, how the world views it, but nonsensical in the sense that it doesn't really line up with the scriptures. It doesn't line up with with Jesus and and and, and Jesus's life and 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 the words of Jesus, the truth that he demonstrated in the earth. This prophecies, these prophecies are not lining up with this, and and this supposed uh, revelation knowledge that is coming from God. God doesn't con- contradict Himself. If He says, "Love your enemies," so that you can be like Him, well, that's what He's not going to change His mind about that. He hasn't changed His mind about loving your enemies. And he's asking us to move in that truth and that makes us more like him. And when I see people who profess the faith of Christianity, those who have been doing, a lot of them have large ministries doing great great works in the earth and yet they are supporting people who don't even practice the basic moral standards of Christianity and the justification for it is that God is behind that person which is absolutely ludicrous and so some of the prophecies, I'm, 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 
I'm going to specifically deal with this prophecy about Donald Trump having a second term. And those people who prophesied, they have come back and then they've they've made adjustments to the prophecy. And I've heard some of them say that it didn't come to pass because it was uh, reliant upon the fact that Trump would would repent. And only if he would repent, then the prophecy would have come to pass. So how is that from God? If God is all-knowing, he knows the beginning from the end. So he didn't see it coming. He didn't see that this man was not going to repent. And that he would give you a prophecy that's reliant upon someone repenting when they didn't repent and he would have had to have known that the man would not repent and so we have to as believers we really have to think think not just rational thinking but thinking using the truth of who God is, the ways of God, the heart of God. Use that. Use that to reason with. Not because you believe someone because they have spoken some words of prophecy that have come to pass. And so uh, you never question. When there is error within the prophecy as if their prophecy will always be infallible. Even though if you know the word of God, you know that it's going against that truth. But you receive it and accept it anyway. You know, it's time for us. To stop imitating godliness by doing godly acts when inside, innately, we are not on the inside living in that godly place. The scripture tells us that he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And because he has given that to us and the kingdom of God is in us right it's 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 in us within us we don't have to fake it and we don't have to pretend we don't have to pretend to be godly but when we haven't given up our our egos and and our reputations and our need for attention and our need for approval our need for fame and our need for for status When we haven't been willing to let all of that go, all those things that cloud who we really are, those things, those things that Jesus came into this earth and he was not concerned about his reputation. Clearly, he wasn't concerned about his reputation because at that time, they considered that he was... Really, maybe he's from the devil. Some people even thought that because he was hanging out with people or he was going into their homes, people that were considered sinners, ungodly people. He allowed them to touch him. And people judged him. The religious people judged him, especially the religious leaders. They judged him. But he reminded them so often that he did, he came for the lost. That's who he came here for, the lost. I'm going to read out of Matthew 7. I'm going to start in verse 21. And this is, this is a good script. This is Jesus speaking in this script. These are his words. And, um, and it's basically... He's talking about people who are doing good works, great works, 
But the problem is, is that they're doing it apart from God. So it, what you're seeing is not the work of God. So here we go. Matthew 7 verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Verse 22. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? So these people were able to prophesy, cast out demons, do, do mighty works, mi miracles. They did these things. And I'm sure that man was impressed by it. He didn't question it. But Jesus said in verse 23, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. Depart from me. So we can do good works apart from God. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we really know him. I was having a discussion with a dear friend of mine. And one of the things that I thought about is, you know, when we first in, in the church, the church organization, these ministries, when you, you first come in, our focus is getting people ready to work the ministry. That's, that's the main focus, to get them to behave a certain way, to give up certain types of behavior, to become more productive within the church and to, to work that, that ministry. And as a result of it, we never really learn how to be, how to really be who we are, how to strip off all those things that really are not part of who we really are. Things that we've grown up with, beliefs that we've grown up with, that, that have been taught to us, that has nothing to do with who we are in Jesus. Has nothing to do with it. And... I think about that word again, entanglement. Sometimes we can become so entangled with all of those things that we attribute to what makes us who we are. Like how much money we've made and the kinds of careers we've had and the education and the people that we know and the kinds of clothes that we wear and the places that we go and the status that we have among people. We've allowed all of that, how hard we work, how productive we are. We've allowed all of those things to define us. And I'm speaking from a person who has gone through all of that. And I am still stripping off things that I've learned and made a part of my life. And God is telling me it wasn't necessary. A lot of things that we we take on just isn't necessary. We have our image that we want to portray. A lot of times we're looking at other people. In fact, we're being taught to look at other people and to say, um, I want to be like this person and I want to have a ministry like this person. And 
in one level, at, at one level of growth in your life, it, that will work. That will work because you have to start somewhere. You have to start m- at least moving through the process and growing. But what I'm saying to you is that you cannot stay there. You have to keep growing closer to God. And and in growing closer with God, a whole bunch of things are not going to be able to go with you. They're not even necessary. And learning how to truly be who we are in the image of our Father, our Heavenly Father, I know that we will have greater impact in the earth. We say that we are we are changed. We come in and we change an environment, that we're environment changers or we're culture changers. But are we? Look at our culture now. I mean, look at look at what is going on now. So much deception and confusion. For people who really need the truth. And a lot of the lies that people are taking on in this moment is very self-destructive. And they don't even realize how destructive it is to their own lives. Because they're not seeing Jesus as he really is. Jesus did not teach us to hate people. He did not. It's not acceptable for us to say that we are pro-life when we support other areas within our society that actually destroys and kills lives. So it's like a double standard. But we haven't, as a group, as a body, recognized how we're complicit and the things that we see going on in the world, in our country, in our communities, and even in our, in our church, that we're complicit in that. We talk about, you know, the, 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 the depression, the amount of people dealing with depression within the church, depression, dealing with adultery, I mean, dealing with uh, just sexual um, permissiveness, all those things that are happening because we're missing the mark. But let us continue to pursue truth. Let us not give up. Yes, we are falling short of the mark. Yes, yes, we are. But God has promised us that the work that he began in us, that he is faithful to complete it. So we will never give up on ourselves. We'll never give up on the body of Christ where we need to be. I will continue to speak the truth, speak the truth over my life and the lives of others. As I grow, I commit to imparting what God has shown me that has brought about that growth. What God has done in me that has brought about that growth. This is something that only God can do in us. And we just have to stay open, open, open. And recognize the part that we play in it. I'm going to pause right here for a moment. Let's pray. Father, I praise you and I thank you. I thank you for this time. This time that we have with one another. I thank you, Lord God. You said that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. You said that you would present us without spot and without blemish before the Father. That is your prophecy to us. And I thank you. I thank you. Your prophecy is that what you've begun in us, you will complete it. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your perfect love that drives out all fear. I thank you, Lord God, that we are no longer subject to guilt and condemnation, that we can move forward knowing that we are forgiven, that the work is finished. You finished it on the cross. 
I thank you that we are complete and we're lacking in nothing. That we have everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. That by your stripes we were healed. These are your words of truth. And we just receive them today. We continue to meditate on them. We continue to consider them and how we think, the attitudes that we hold, and how we respond to others. And we thank you, Lord. We know that it may be impossible to man, but nothing is impossible to you. And we praise you for this. And it's in Christ Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining me in this hour. And next Uh, Well, not next week, but tomorrow, Friday Night Joy with Pastor Ray Rose at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So join him and be blessed. Thank you again for giving me this time with you. God bless you. Love you. Bye. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news.